What's up everybody? I hope you are all well. Today we are going to cover 10 things I wish I knew before traveling to Thailand. But it's really 10 things you'll wish you knew before traveling to Thailand. My name is Jeffrey Peterson. I have been here for, damn, almost four years now. Um, here in the lovely kingdom of Thailand. I absolutely love my life here, wouldn't have it any other way. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this list. Um, just off top, this list is for newbies who are coming here uh, to prepare for your trip. Make sure you got have all your I's dotted and T's crossed so you hit the ground running. If you're a vet, if you're a Thailand vet, Go ahead and rock with us. Check out the video because there's some updates. There's been some misinformation floating around. You know, there's no requirement for these YouTubers out there that may have given you some misinformation. I'm not gonna name any names, but I will cover some points that I heard in other videos and make those corrections so you guys don't end up in hot water when you're here, you dig? Number one um, is a simple one. There is ATM fees here. Um, the ATM fee across the board is 220 baht. That's nearly seven bucks US. For me, I'm with Charles Schwab Bank. Charles Schwab does a no ATM fee policy. So what happens is I get a deposit in my account every month from Charles Schwab for uh, whatever I spent on those ATM fees. So what you need to do guys is googly moogly, use that Google and find an account that reimburses ATM fees internationally, okay? Simple one, but think about it guys, $7 every time you get cash, that will add up uh, quite a bit. Um, it's a nice surprise when I get that deposit from Schwab because it's been like 100 bucks, 200 bucks um, in my busy days, you know, but usually, you know, somewhere between 50 and 100 bucks, I get a deposit back in my account. Nice little surprise to get that money back. So that's cool. Uh, number two, apps you'll need and nice little conveniences here in Thailand. First thing you're going to need to download is uh, two apps, Grab and Bolt. Both are taxi apps. Uh, Grab is usually my go-to because uh, it's, I just use it more because I can order food also. So you can order taxis and food from Grab. Um, do, 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 do. What else is Grab good for? Ma mainly your taxi and your food is what you're gonna use for Grab. And that's around the clock. I believe you can schedule a taxi. So if you have like an early morning flight, you can schedule a taxi to pick you up at 5 a.m. from your hotel, which is also very convenient. But, but be careful with that because I have scheduled and gotten canceled on on those early mornings. You know, these taxi guys are not always the most reliable, but if you uh, do it in the moment, you'll be able to get someone 90% uh, sure. If you're somewhere out in like Bang Na or somewhere like away from the city center, it might be a little bit more difficult but this app is very, very reliable. Now, that's not to, uh, let's not count Bolt out. I do use Bolt if I can't get someone on Grab or I'll price compare, right? So if uh, I look up, I'm going to Bangkok, let's say for example, from Pattaya, and Grab quotes me 1,600 baht. I'll pull out Bolt, I'll see what Bolt quotes me. Sometimes Bolt's cheaper. Sometimes Bolt is a lot cheaper, so I'll go with Bolt. Uh, I actually just used Bolt when I was coming back from Bangkok. I was down, I was in like Bang Na area actually. And I was able to get the Bolt from Bangkok to Pattaya for 840 baht. Cheapest by far I've ever paid. My normal taxi guy, I give him 1200 and I usually tip him and give him, give him an extra 300 baht so I give him 1500 going back and forth from uh, Bangkok to Pattaya. Number three, number three is a myth that we need to debunk, okay? Everybody, when you're out here renting cars or renting motorbikes, vloggers have been telling you guys to get international driver's licenses. Guys, you're entering in a country that is somewhat lawless, and if you pull out your international driver's license in the face of a Thai police officer, 
you're going to put a um, smile on his face and he's going to chuckle at you and tell you to pay a fine. These, these uh, international driver licenses are not valid in Thailand. It's good if you have it, but just, I mean, you don't need it. First of all, you don't need it here, okay? It doesn't do anything for you. And really the point that I'm trying to, um, to get across to you guys is if, if you get it, fine. If you're doing traveling and whatever, you want it in your back pocket as some type of an insurance policy, fine, that's totally up to you. What I don't want you to do is pull that out in front of a police officer and argue with that police officer because that's not going to get you anywhere but in trouble and escalate a problem, okay? This is what happens if a police officer stops you. Smile, say less than necessary, keep your mouth shut, and if um, he's, if you need to pay a fine, pay the fine and keep it moving. Again, do not argue about this international driver license thing. It, it does not, it's not law here that they are valid at all. Check with your trip, check with your AAA, look in the book, it says in the book, there's a list of countries where these international driver's license are valid. Thailand is not on that list, okay? You guys are getting information from vloggers and then thinking that that, that information holds up. So that myth is debunked, okay? No international driver's licenses, guys. Doesn't work. I got stopped in Chiang Mai years ago. The cop laughed at me when I pulled it out and said, yes, uh, 500 baht, please, okay? Uh, now, on this topic, uh, if you are renting motorcycles, cars, stuff like that, you may want to get some insurance. My insurance that I use is called Safety Wing, link down below. Just smart to have if you guys are traveling, if you get in an accident, you, um, you need some type of insurance in order for the hospital to treat you, okay? A lot of people come over, they say they're gonna pay cash but it's best to have that insurance policy because if you're out cold or something like that, they can see that you have some type of policy or at least if they can talk to you a little bit, they'll know that you have some type of policy and they will treat you accordingly. You don't want to be kicked out on the street here in uh, Thailand with you know, blood coming out your ears or something like that. Number four, number four is another one of these things people tell you um, that you should learn a little bit of Thai over here. It gets you a long way. It gets you in with the locals. Let's debunk that myth as well. Here's why. Let's say we're going into Starbucks to order something simple like a coffee. If you walk up to the worker working behind the register and you come up and say, Swati Cup, their ear is gonna possibly, I mean, you are a foreigner, they can see that they can clearly see that you're a foreigner, but if you start speaking Thai, they may expect more Thai. For me, the smartest and simplest way to do this is to go up and say, hello, let's establish English from the beginning. So they're thinking in English and they're assuming that you don't know any Thai. That's what we want because if you start speaking thai -glish and they're speaking back to you in Thai a mile a minute, you do not know how to answer them. Does that make sense? Now, if you wanna be polite, learn how to say thank you, that's the only thing you really need is kam kum kap, okay? Thank you, kam kum kap. That's, that one will uh, just put a little smile on their face. It makes everything very nice. If you start, if you start with Swati Kab though, if you start with the hello in Thai, you're establishing that the conversation is is a uh, started in Thai. Um, I experienced this also when I was in Japan. Japan, certain areas in Japan, they don't speak a lot of English at all. And when I was going into Starbucks specifically, whenever I opened up with Konnichiwa, it was always a headache. So I just defaulted to hello. Like, let's start with English. Yes, yes, yes. Number six on this list. When you get here, domestic travel is very, very cheap and convenient. So I would not commit to one area. Book your hotel for maybe two or three nights when you get to Bangkok and if you get an inkling or if you've got a list of places you want to go, very, very easy 
to get to these places. There's the new Seahorse Ferry that will come out of uh, Bali High Pier here in Pattaya. Look up Seahorse Ferry, come out of Bali High, and it's a 12 hour cruise to Koh Samui. And I think it's around 3,000 or 4,000 baht depending on the cabin that you get and if you're bringing a motorbike. You may wanna bring a motorbike with you if you're going to Koh Samui because on those islands, it's yes, it is Koh Samui, they want your passport. They actually want, they don't want a copy, they want a physical passport for the time that you're in Samui, which uh, if you've been watching me for a while, that's a huge no-no. But uh, hey, I'm going up to Chiang Mai this weekend, flying out of Pattaya, my first time flying out of the Pattaya airport, and the round trip, which isn't the cheapest, but the round trip for this one is less than 120 bucks US. Came to like 115 or something like that. Now, I have gotten flights to Chiang Mai from Bangkok for about just over a thousand baht, so $30 US. Unbelievable. Um, the trains, the buses, the bus from here in Pattaya to Bangkok is 119 baht. Unbelievable. That's like $4 US. So uh, just explore these options, get around the country, see a few cities while you're here. You'll be happy that you did that. Now, as you're exploring, we brings us to number seven. You're probably going to visit some temples while you're here. Temple etiquette goes like this. You're going to want to wear long pants when you enter into the temples, not when you just enter the temple grounds, but there's going to be um, the actual temple. You'll go up some stairs and go inside where they have the nice Buddha statues or the monks are chanting, things like this. You're going to take your shoes off. Um, you'll see where people put their shoes. This stuff is very simple, but just be aware that there is an etiquette for the temples. Uh, if you're with your lady, they're gonna ask her to cover her shoulders. So, oh yeah, fellas too, don't wear tank tops. Try to wear, you know, a t-shirt, a t-shirt or collared shirt, long pants is the way to go, is the best way to go. It is hot here in Thailand. If you are wearing shorts like cargo shorts or khaki shorts, you are fine. Um, I went yesterday with a friend of mine and she was wearing shorts, uh, but she had like a nice t-shirt on. She, like, she didn't look um, overly exposed. So just kind of use common sense in this area. If you look halfway decent, you're fine. And um, like anything in Thailand, guys, smile a lot, have a positive attitude and everything will go over just fine. Um, Number, the, this positive attitude brings us to number eight, okay? Here in Thailand, there is defamation laws and there's laws against speaking out against government and the royal family. So when you're here, um, you're doing your Instagram post, you're doing your Snapchat post, your Facebook post, what have you, make sure that those posts are positive, okay? There's no reason to, there's no reason anyway in life to be putting up negative images or negative messages on social media, guys. It's just good for your soul. Don't be the person that puts that out there negative. But if you see something funny, if you see something that doesn't look right, if you have a bad experience at a restaurant or a hotel, do not post about that stuff because it's actually, even if it's true, it is actually illegal here in the kingdom of Thailand. Um, this reigns true for most countries in Asia. Even if someone stole a million dollars from you on a bad business deal, you cannot post about that person in a negative way on social media. So just something, you know, a little tip to keep you out of some potential hot water. Um, again, all of these steps are leading right into each other. Let's go with number nine. Let's get into number nine. And that is be patient when you're over here. Keep a positive attitude. Yes, the Thai people know that you are here as a tourist and they are here to um, help you out with that. Now, if you go into a 7-Eleven and ask for something that you need, 
what would you need at a 7-Eleven? Hmm, I don't know. Let's, whatever you may need, and they don't know what it is. Let's say you need a certain medicine. Let's say you need a cough medicine, and you say, I need for <coughs> cough medicine. And this Thai, the little Thai girl that's behind there is gonna go, hmm? What she's gonna do, is she, she may walk away from you, get the other staff, and then the other staff are gonna come back. There's gonna be five of them surrounding you, all speaking Thai, none of them looking at you. They're very good at, um, they're, they're very good at washing out of the corner of their eye or something. <laughs> but you will feel ignored. You will feel ignored. Don't fear. Don't blow up on them. Remain, remain quiet for a few minutes. Let them do your thing. One of them is going to come up to you and say, cough medicine? You say yes. And they'll go, boom, here. Here you go. But if you were to blow up and say, hey, I need cough medicine. I am over here dying. I need to get back to my hotel. I'm on my vacation. They are just gonna walk, they will just walk away from you and ignore you until you leave. So again, patience, smile, everything sabai sabai, everything is no problem, everything is chill. Even if somebody, even if you deal with um, a negative person or a person is in a bad mood, you you are you can find that particular service or need to be fulfilled right down the street at another establishment. I had an um, an issue with a woman, not really an issue, but an incident, I suppose, um, where I got pad kapow down here at the end of the block. Normally, I go downstairs to the to the lady who's an amazing cook downstairs from my building. I get uh, meals in there for anywhere from 80 to 120 baht, depending on how many cups of coffee I drink when I'm down there. And I absolutely love this lady downstairs. One day I decided to try another lady who's right on the beach, right on beach road. So I just decided to try her place. I got pad kapow, simple dish. I think she charged me 100 baht for it. And I, and I made a comment. I wasn't being very serious, but I said, oh, Mama down the street charges me 60 baht. And the lady um, just replied back, hey, go to her then. Okay, I go to her every time now. <laughs> if someone's not gonna treat me good, I'm up and out of there. I'm not gonna start an argument with her or finagle price over, you know, 20 baht pad kapow, you know? Not gonna happen. Anyway, so um, patience. You know, use patience. Patience is a virtue and will make your life easy when you're over here traveling or if you're or if you have moved here, be patient. You are here to enjoy. There's no reason to get upset in any situation here. Trust me on this one, guys. Number 10, bringing it home. Scams. Let's talk about scams. You hear you see all these videos with these outrageous clickbait titles about scams in Thailand. Have I been in scam have I been scammed in Thailand? No. There was one time I was over in uh, near the Grand Palace looking for the Grand Palace and a tuk-tuk driver came up to me and told me that the Grand Palace was closed because it was a holiday. This was a flat out lie and a scam because what he wanted to do was take me around on a tuk-tuk tour of, of local shops like gift shops and try to get me to buy stuff and um, he would have gotten a commission of those sales. Now, it was kind of obvious that uh, this guy was doing this. That's an outliner, I think. That's an, that's an outlier. Um, what I've been seeing lately is no meter taxi scams. This one, guys, is a very simple fix. If you get into a taxi and the guy's not running the meter, negotiate the price right then and there. We used to do this all the time when me and my friend would go out in Bangkok. We used to go down to like Silam all the time from where we were at in Saton. We'd give the guy, you know, whatever it was, 100 baht, 200 baht, 
you got to figure out you got you kind of have to know the distances and how much things are if you look it up on grab if you look it up on grab and see the price show him that price and tell him this is what you'll pay but negotiate it though don't don't demand it and don't 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 call them a scammer and don't film them saying that they're being a scam artist because this is how it works over here not every you you want the ta you want the meter taxi but what i'm trying to tell you is it's not mandatory and it's not always something in the culture like when a thai person gets in a thai person's not really concerned that it's a metered taxi they'll they'll say where they're going and they'll negotiate the price right then and there and when you negotiate the price you can ask three times 200 baht yes 200 baht how much you charging me 200 baht get just make it crystal clear but it's not a scam thing though the taxi thing is not really a scam thing and same thing with the tuk tuk guys the tuk tuk guys again if you make it crystal clear that this is what you're paying 200 or 300 baht whatever it is if you're going up the street in a souk in on that side of town in downtown 100 baht or 150 baht from a souk to nana establish that price really really hammer in that that's how much you're paying because a tuk tuk guy might try to add you know you might say uh 200 baht and then when you get out he'll say 400 baht and you say no 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 you told me 200 you told me 200 again remain calm the tuk tuk guys do roll with little mini bats and those uh batons the police batons that will extend you don't want to get in a fight with a tuk tuk guy um they might they might be they might be a little tipsy off a little bit of uh thai whiskey that they got in their little hidden container so don't don't do not pick a fight with a tuk tuk guy uh what are the scams you guys hear about i think that's about it yeah i think that's about it i think that's about it but guys really there's no scams over here um again establish establish and negotiate these prices and that will let the person know that they can't play with you they can't uh, bully you and that's the main thing I think when people get quote unquote scammed it's because they accepted a deal too fast without really going over what's involved and what's expected from both parties that being said gentlemen while you're over here smile with everything if you're dealing with police smile if you're dealing with a waitress that doesn't understand you smile if you're dealing with a uh, lady boy in your room that wants an extra thousand baht at the end smile and everything will go smoothly thank you guys for watching um, if you're new here welcome if you are a long time viewer please both of you guys make sure that that bell is hit because from what I understand you are not really subscribed until you hit that bell Okay, gentlemen, thank you guys for watching. Leave your comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought. As always, peace, love.